All right. Uh, prediction number seven. Bitcoin will make a run for a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Yes. Yes. That's um that that's a bold one. That's a bold one. But we I, I think it's definitely, one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's definitely true because when you when you look at what the crypto markets are doing, and I'm just pulling up my notes on this real quick, because mm-hmm. I ran a, a pretty I don't know, I, it was actually like three weeks ago I ran an analysis on it and that's when I became pretty convinced that cryptos are going to have a, a pretty big rally over the next um next few months. But um, you know, the, the big bull thesis here has been okay. It's it, it's a risk asset. It's a risk on play. When the Fed turns the the, the press printer on, the, the money printer on, then boom, it, it rallies. And when the Fed turns the money printer off, uh, Bitcoin gets gets crushed. Um, so obviously, we think that in 2023, the Fed's not going to turn the money printer back on per se, but they are definitely going to stop constricting the economy and raising rates in the way they've done in 2022. And that pause systematically caused rallies in stocks, where we think it's going to cause a big rally in in crypto assets as well. So the numbers here are that the the typical crypto winner lasts about, let's see, 50 to 60 months. So we've had multiple crypto winners before. So we have multiple precedents here. And the typical crypto winner lasts about 50 to 60 months and takes Bitcoin down about 80%. At last check, we were down about 75% over 58 months. So we're right within the bounds of a typical crypto winter bottom, down 80% over 50 to 60 months. We're down 75% over 58 months. So that's very consistent with the bottom of a crypto winter. Point number two, those bottoms tend to happen about 12 months before Bitcoin happening every single time. Bitcoin happening 12 months before that, that's when that bottom usually happens. Where are we right now? The next Bitcoin happening is in, I believe, April. It's in the first quarter of 2024. So that brings us to the first quarter of 2023 is 12 months before. So that's another thing that would make it consistent with a with a crypto uh, w- winter bottom. We're down about 80% over 50 to 60 months. We're 12 months before having Those things are all, like if you're kind of lining up the ducks here, mm-hmm. it's starting to look pretty good because, you know, duck number mm-hmm. one, we're down. 80 percent duck number two we're 50 to 60 months into this duck number three we're 12 months before having it's like oh okay this is starting to have all the formations of a typical crypto winter bottom and then you throw on top of that the fact that okay crypto prices tend to model money supply growth so when money supply growth is rising crypto prices rise when money supply growth is falling crypto prices fall money supply growth will probably reaccelerate rise again in 2023 so that's another duck that's lined up so you're seeing all of these things that are lining up that are consistent with a, a bottom in in crypto prices so here's the thing about you know making a run for 100k well what tends to happen previous crypto winners we bottom 80% down 50 to 60 months into a crypto winner, 12 months before having. What do we do in those 12 months into the having? Well, we tend to retrace 38 to 50% of losses in that previous crypto winner. So in the previous crypto winner, if we drop big, then over the, that 12 months from the 12 months before the having into the having, Bitcoin tends to retake 38 to 50% of those losses in that previous crypto winner every single time. So if we rerun that, history repeats here. We're again, we're 80% down, we're 50 to 60 months in, we're 12 months before having. History says over the next 12 months, what we should do is we should retake 38 to 50% of the losses Bitcoin has experienced since the peak in late 2021. If we do that, that puts Bitcoin running towards 40 to $50,000 over the next 12 months. And I think that is exactly where Bitcoin prices will run to in 2023. And I think a run towards 100K is totally possible in 2024 because in each new one of these crypto boom cycles after the halving, then crypto prices want to, Bitcoin prices went on to make new highs. Mm -hmm. So I think where we stand today, we stand in the trough of a crypto winter near or at the very bottom with a massive turnaround rally on deck over the next 12 months. So I would be a net buyer of cryptos at these prices. Do you feel that some of the attention that's been brought to the crypto space by bad actors has any impact on this prediction moving forward? 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, are using that as uh, crutches for the crypto market, I guess you could say. And I don't, I just don't see it. Like, I just, mm -hmm. I don't see why that matters, honestly. I mean, the internet industry had plenty of bad actors in the late 1990s and early 2000s. That didn't stop the internet. You know, like, bad actors don't stop a good movement. Every tree has a couple bad apples. Mm -hmm. And yes, I guess this this crypto tree, so to speak, has had quite a few bad apples, and they just keep coming up and up and up and up and up. And it, that's not good for publicity. But publicity doesn't drive stock prices or crypto prices or asset prices. What drives them is is fundamentals. And I think the fundamentals for cryptos are are continuing to improve. And I think that the the risk environment is going to improve for them. So. Um, as awful as what Sam Bankman Fried did and all those other people, um, I don't think it's going to have materially negative impact on, I mean, why should it? Because one mm -hmm. bad person, you know, was embezzling funds. Like if he wasn't embezzling funds and everything, the, him embezzling funds was not indicative of the fundamentals of crypto. It was indicative of who he mm -hmm. is as a person. He could have been embezzling funds in 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 a, in a tech fund, in a oil fund, in a whatever fund, right? The fact that he was embezzling funds that has nothing to do with the fact that it was crypto. It has to do with the fact that he was just a shady dude. So you know, mm -hmm. separate the the man from the movement, separate the individuals from the fundamentals, and I, I think you'll understand that those bad stories should not compromise your fundamental belief in cryptos you either are bearish on them and those confirm your beliefs or mm -hmm. you're bullish on them and those don't matter i don't think those are really relevant to anybody's thesis or they should not be relevant to anybody's thesis